This video is part of a series of videos looking at activity-based costing. The first video in the series looked at an introduction to activity-based costing by using a single product. In this video, we look at a more complex example by using three products. And in the final one in the series, we take a brief look at time-driven activity-based costing. One of the problems we have with overheads is how to allocate them to products when using a full product cost approach. Traditionally, we'd use a single overhead absorption rate, but as I explained in the first video in this series, this can distort product costs and also potentially result in poor decisions being made about products. To illustrate how ABC helps with this problem, let's look at an example using three products and calculate the total product cost and the profit per product using firstly a single overhead absorption rate using machine hours, then we'll quickly recalculate using labour hours and finally we'll use activity based costing. Let's assume we're producing a type of table that could be round, square or octagonal in shape. We're given some basic information such as a selling price the direct materials cost per unit and also the cost per labour hour. We're also given information about the number of machine hours and the labour hours used for each product. We've also been given the production units for each product, so by taking these and multiplying them by the machine hours and the labour hours per product, we can calculate the total number of machine hours and the total number of labour hours used. We can then use this when we're calculating our single overhead absorption rates based on either machine hours or labour hours. Finally, we're given some activities based on purchase orders, deliveries and inspections for each product. And we're also told that the production overheads total $167,500. Let's calculate our absorption rates using machine hours and labour hours. As a reminder as to how we do this, we take our total overheads for both cases, machine hours and labour hours. In each instance, we divide it by the total machine hours or the total labour hours. And this then gives us our overhead absorption rate per machine hour and the overhead absorption rate per labour hour. We can then apply these to our products. So if we take the selling price, the materials and the labour for each product as provided by the information, we can allocate our overheads. So using the machine hours rate, you'll notice that the square product only uses half the machine hours that the round product does, and therefore is only allocated half the amount of overheads allocated to round. Similarly, Octagon uses more machine hours than the other two products and therefore picks up more of the overheads. If we then look at it using the overheads per labour hour, we can see that the round product and the square product both use the same amount of labour and have therefore been allocated the same amount of overheads. So what we can see here is that using machine hours loads overheads onto products that are machine intensive but using labour hours loads the overheads onto those products that are labour intensive. And the big question is, is that a fair way of doing it? Let's look at using activity-based costing as a means of allocating the overheads across the three products. We can look at activity-based costing as a series of steps. We first need to identify the activities that generate the production overhead costs. Then we need to estimate the costs of the activities. Then select a cost driver for each activity. Estimate the cost driver usage by all of the products. Calculate a cost driver application rate and then trace the activity costs to each product. So looking at this in action, we're given our 167,500 overheads and what we've done is broken it down into a series of activities to which we can logically allocate costs. And these are called cost pools. So for step one, we've identified the activities that create the indirect or production overhead costs. 
Activities such as assembly, purchasing department, delivery costs, machine maintenance, inspection and quality and control, these are all typical activities within the manufacturing process. Next we need to estimate the cost of these activities, which could be done from either historical data forecast forward, or simply based on forecast volumes and the cost of producing those volumes in the next year. Then we need to decide a cost driver that's appropriate for each particular activity. So assembly, because it's people that are putting the products together, the logical basis might be labour hours. The logical basis for the purchasing department costs would be the number of purchase orders raised. And you can see that delivery costs, the number of deliveries, machine maintenance, number of machine hours, and the inspection and quality, the number of inspections. So they're all logical bases on which to allocate the costs. What we then need to do is to estimate the total usage of our activities for all of the products. So for the round, square and octagon products, we need the total. So this is where we've calculated the total production units, total number of machine hours to produce those units, total number of labour hours, total number of purchase orders raised, total number of deliveries and the total number of inspections. Now we can use these totals to calculate a rate per activity. We can then use the total activities calculated on the previous slide to match that with our cost of each particular activity, i.e. the cost pools, to derive an activity rate. To illustrate how this is done, let's look at the basic data again and we'll use labour hours as an example. So we know that we've got labour hours for round, square and octagon and we've calculated the total of 11,000 to produce all three products. We decided that that would be an appropriate basis to allocate the assembly costs. So taking our total cost pool of $60,000 for the assembly Dividing that by the total activity, we can arrive at the activity rate of $5.45. And similarly, we do the same thing for purchasing, delivery, machine maintenance and inspection. So to complete step 5, we arrive at the cost of driver application rates for each activity. Just note that these are calculated to two decimal places. In reality, because of volumes, I'd suggest that you calculate rates to three or four decimal places for more accuracy. We can then use this data to allocate the overheads across the three products of round, square and octagon. So let's have a look at how we arrive at that. To illustrate this, let's just isolate labour hours and purchase orders that we use to allocate the assembly and purchasing costs to the products. Now we know the number of labour hours and the number of purchase orders for each product round, square and octagon. And we know the cost of the assembly and the purchasing and that we've calculated rates for labour hours associated with assembly of $5.45 and for purchase orders we've calculated a cost of $178.57 for each purchase order. You might think that's quite expensive, which illustrates another point about activity-based costing in that it highlights the cost of activities and therefore managers can look at that and investigate it to see whether it can be made more efficient. So to allocate our assembly costs to each product, we need the number of labour hours for each product and our rate for a labour hour. We can then multiply the hours by the rate and what that then gives us is the amount of overheads to be allocated associated with assembly to each product. Let's quickly do the same thing for purchase orders. So we take the number of purchase orders and our cost. We simply multiply one by the other and that gives us the amount of overheads allocated related to purchasing for each product. So with step six, we've calculated the overheads in total associated with the round, square and the octagon products. But what we really want is a rate per product. So what we do is we take the total overheads allocated for each product and divide it by the number of production units. And that then gives us an overhead rate per product. In the same way that we did when we used a single absorption rate of either machine hours or labour hours, we can allocate our overheads on the ABC basis to the products. 
and arrive at not just the total product costs but also the profit per product. We could compare this with the profit arrived at when we were using a single overhead rate based on either machine hours or labour hours, and we'll notice that there are differences between all three. However, looking at the profits is a little bit misleading. We really should just be isolating the overheads allocated per product based on the three methods. Let's just compare the overheads allocated under the three methods. If we look at the overheads that we calculated based on a machine hour rate, then the Octagon product has the highest level of overhead, followed by the round product and followed by the square product. It's interesting that the square product only has half the volume of overheads allocated to it that the round product does. When we look at the overheads allocated on a labour hour basis though, the round and the square product have exactly the same overheads allocated to them. And when we look at the overheads allocated on the ABC basis, we'll see that there are similarities between round and square, but again the octagon product is allocated more overheads than the other two. In order to understand what's going on, we really need to look at the basic data again. Returning to our basic data, when we were looking at allocating overheads based on machine hours, we can see that the square product uses half the number of machine hours to produce the same number of products than the round one. And therefore this is one of the reasons, well in fact the reason, why the overheads allocated to square are half that allocated to round. When we were looking at the labour hours as the basis, we'll notice that the round and the square product use exactly the same number of labour hours and therefore were allocated the same overheads. So the difference between the overhead rates was purely to do with the way we were allocating the overheads. If we look at the costs allocated using an ABC basis, we'll see that the round and square product do have similar levels, which does actually reflect that they use similar levels of activity. An octagon does use more labour hours, it uses more machine hours, albeit they are producing more products, but they also have more deliveries, more inspections, and therefore should, you could argue, be allocated more of the overheads. Returning to our comparison at profit level, you'll remember that if we take selling price, less materials and labour, we arrive at the contribution. And in fact here, there are different levels of contribution achieved from each of the three products which could in fact be due to market forces on the selling price. So making a comparison at profit level is not really appropriate. We really need to be looking at the overheads when comparing different allocation bases. ABC then uses a more sophisticated method of allocating production overheads, or sometimes referred to as indirect product costs, to the products using a range of appropriate bases and therefore produces a much better reflection of the costs of production and this then feeds into the pricing of the products. It also aids the management in their understanding of what drives the costs and as we've seen highlights areas where improvements could potentially be made. There are two other videos in this short series. The first gives an introduction to activity-based costing and looks at some of the benefits and drawbacks and the third one explains time-driven activity-based costing. Other videos and resources can be found at my website managementaccountingandstrategy.com and the website promotes management accounting in support of strategy.